the Gilda's maximum lawyers community of legal entrepreneurs who are taking their businesses and lives to the next level. As a Guild member, you'll build relationships, be held accountable, and learn strategies specifically designed to get you unstuck and accelerate your plan for growth. Members are also granted exclusive access to masterminds hosted around the country. Our next event is coming up, and we're heading to Scottsdale, Arizona. There's something truly magical about the power of these in-person connections where real-time breakthroughs happen. Picture this. You're surrounded by like-minded law firm owners tackling your business and mindset challenges together. The energy is electric, the insights are transformative, and the results are game-changing. Investing in yourself is the best decision you'll ever make. The knowledge, strategies, and breakthroughs you'll gain are priceless assets that will supercharge your practice and propel you forward. Join the Guild and secure your ticket to Scottsdale at the best possible price by visiting maxlawevents.com. In today's episode, we're sharing a presentation from MaxLawCon 2021. Keep listening to hear Brian Reedy as we share his talk, Sales That Convert. You can also head to the Maximum Lawyer YouTube channel to watch the full video. Now to the episode. Run your law firm the right way. This is the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Maximum Lawyer Podcast. Your hosts, Jim Hacking and Tyson Mutrix. Let's partner up and maximize your firm. Welcome to the show. Brian Reedy with Reedy Law Office, and I'm going to kind of walk you through some of my sales stuff. As you heard, our firm is grossed over a million dollars. We do divorce in Chicagoland area, and I don't do any consultations. I don't have my attorneys do consultations. And in many ways, I believe that attorneys do consultations wrong. And I'm going to explain how and why. It's going to be very difficult in 20 minutes, but I'll do my best. A couple things. Fundamentally, you have to understand and believe that what you're offering a client is going to make their life better. If you don't, stop now, find something else to do. You see, when most people think about sales, they get queasy. They think this guy, right? The guy that's pushy, that's going to be selfish, that they're thinking about themselves they're dishonest, they're doing something to somebody. The reality is sales is not something you do to somebody, it's something you do for somebody. But in order to do that, you have to understand that sales are an emotional decision justified by logic, okay? And I'm gonna say that again because attorneys don't wanna believe that. It's an emotional decision later justified by logic. You ever hear somebody talk about a car? They talk about, oh, I got a great deal right? That's the logic they're trying to justify or as a really safe vehicle. No, you probably like the smell of a car. Maybe you like the look, whatever it was, there was some emotional connection that you had. And then you later justified it with logic. If you understand that you're going to be able to convert much better when it comes to sales. You see the reason why lawyers are typically not good at sales is because we think with our brain, we think with the, you know, you ever see the matrix, you got the two pills, I don't know, one of them, you see the world differently. We took the one pill and now our view is fucked up of the world. Okay, everything is a problem, everything's litigation. We see things differently. We start hearing facts and we start analyzing it as a fact pattern in law school. But you know what? That's not how people think. They're not coming to you as a fact pattern. They're coming to you with a real life problem. And when you start thinking like this is a fact pattern of, okay, I know this, this is A, B, and C, we're going to have to do this, we're going to have to do that, you're not listening anymore. You're trying to solve a problem. And again, during the sales consultation, you should not be talking about any legal advice. I will go so far as to say that if you provide legal advice during the consultation, you may be committing malpractice, okay? Meaning you're getting one version of events for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, especially if you do any litigation, you know there's another side of the story. So if you give them any advice of what to expect or what those outcomes may be, you are probably doing more harm to you, your firm, and that client at that meeting. The meeting, the sales meeting is about making a decision. That's it. It's not about what legal strategy we're gonna do. It's about making a decision to change your life. Sales is something you do for somebody. You have to remember that this is not about you. It's always about the client. And if you can stop thinking how you would feel, you're gonna be able to do things better for a client. And the way to do that is to ask more questions. 
The questions that we ask should not be very complex. It should be stuff like, tell me more about that. Why does that matter to you? In fact, in our sales script, we have about six questions total. And those are the types of questions they are. And I'll share some more with you here in a moment. But you have to understand why do the clients come to you in the first place? There's been some wonderful speakers at this event and they've talked about marketing and that's wonderful. That's a foundational moment of where are they now and then where do they wanna be? Their problems usually fall into one of three categories. And there can be permutations off of that, but time, money, and their reputation. In pretty much any area of law, meaning time is at issue. Maybe they're gonna to go to prison if they don't make an action. Maybe they're about to die. Maybe they need a divorce quickly. Maybe something is gonna be taken away from them. Maybe their children, their family, they're going to lose time with loved ones. What about their money? What kind of money is at stake? Maybe if you represent someone in the DUI, their CDLs online, that provides their livelihood for their family. Maybe they're gonna be paying maintenance or alimony or a lot more money to the government that they don't wanna pay. The most underlooked one I think is reputation. And the reason I think reputation is underlooked is because as we get older, we try to pretend like things don't matter to us, like things don't hurt our feelings. But you know what, I've come to realize, I do care. I care what my peers think of me. I care what my staff thinks of me. I care what my family thinks of me. Well, how are you going to feel as a father if you don't take action? How are you going to feel as fill in the blank if you don't take action about the problem that brought you in here today? So as we weave through the questions, it's really important to probe and you're gonna find out which one of these things really impacts the client the most. By doing this, you're also gonna be able to provide better service, which is gonna to lead to higher client satisfaction, higher employee satisfaction, and overall more money in your pocket. Now, I said money in your pocket, but I wanna focus on profit. Profit is really important here because I'm not talking about money in this situation. Normally we think of your revenue minus expenses equals profit. In this circumstance, I'm talking about both sides of the transaction should make a profit. And what that means is you are exchanging something you value less for something you value more. Something you value less for something you value more. In the client situation, they are saying, I would rather give you my money than expend the time that it would take for me to learn this. And you're saying, I will take your money and give you my time or my service, my widget, right? So it's really important that you understand this because one of the most common objections in sales is cost too much, right? Well, what does that really mean? They're saying, I don't value what you're selling more than the money in my pocket. So you have to work on discovering that true reason why they came in. Okay, so yeah, truth, truth be told, uh, I looked at these slides for the first time last night. So for those high quick starts in the room, yes, procrastination. So these are again, some of the objections we talk about. We need to focus on what they want, making it profitable for them and not just what we want, the money. So if you don't do that right, you're gonna get these objections, they're not gonna follow through. Okay, let's talk about the actual script, the blueprint for these sales consultations. One thing that I wanna kind of set up is there's some overlap of words. Right now I'm using the word intake. Now, intake can have different meanings. Uh, we've had some great speakers at this conference that talk about intake. What I mean by intake is the time you receive the lead up through the scheduling of the appointment and making that happen, okay? So this is all an orchestrated script. You need to make sure that the meeting is confirmed. Are they meeting in person? Are they meeting online? Is it very clear how this is gonna take place? Do they have the Zoom link? What is going to happen next? Make sure you set them up for success. For example, uh, John Fisher does a wonderful shock and awe package. If that's gonna happen and you want somebody to see that, make sure you say you're going to get a package and in that package is gonna be some really important material. I want you to bring that to the meeting or have it filled out. Whatever you want them to do next, it's really, really important that it takes place here. The other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna talk up your salesperson. Now, you may be the same person in your firm. You may be intake, you may be sales, you may be receptionist. So don't talk in the third person or something like that and say, you know. But if you have multiple people, you wanna build them up, right? So you say, hey, you're gonna be meeting with Joey. Joey is amazing. You're in great hands. 
All that does is it gets that client primed, ready to meet with Joey or whomever they're going to meet with. Once you get that appointment scheduled, you need to make sure they show up. How do you do this? Well, depending on how far out the appointment is, you need to make sure they're confirmed. There should be text messages, emails, phone calls. However you need to do it, you need to make sure they show up. Now, the day of the appointment. Again, your receptionist or whomever's at the front desk should know who's coming in. If you're meeting with a new prospective client named Paul at 1 p.m., when the door opens before one o'clock, have them say, are you Paul? You know, would you like some water? Would you like some coffee? Make them feel comfortable. Understand they've got a problem in their life that's caused them to take action. Have you ever felt overwhelmed with everything there is to do within your legal practice? How do you keep up with your legal work while making time for growing your practice and attracting clients? Do important things like deadlines and even your family fall through the cracks? This is why you should join us at the number one conference for legal entrepreneurs, Max LawCon. We're going to be focused on helping practices scale and bringing calm to the order. This conference is curated in order to accelerate your implementation. Based on where you are in your legal practice, we're going to help you identify exactly what is most important right now. When you leave Max LawCon, you go home with complete clarity, focus, and a plan to make 2022 your best year ever. And not only your best year in terms of revenue, but your best year in terms of time. Time back with your family. More time to do the work that is in your zone of genius. Only taking the clients that you like. And more money in your pocket. It's all at the Maximum Lawyer Conference. Max LawCon is a two-day event on Thursday, June 2nd and Friday, June 3rd in St. Charles, Missouri. Seats are filling fast. Grab yours today at www.maxlawcon2022.com. I think my friend Billy Tarasio yesterday tried a retail location, said it didn't really work out. So that means most of us here don't have a location where people just are walking by, right? And they say, oh, I just was walking by your office and I was thinking about what is a divorce? I'm just browsing for a divorce. Like that doesn't happen, right? So make sure that we're greeting them warmly, friendly. Make sure that it's a well-orchestrated script. Then what we're going to do is we're going to actually go through with our meeting. Now we have some key objectives during our meeting. This is our overall blueprint. First three things we wanna do. You can do them really in any order but you wanna assure them that there's some confidentiality. Even though they're not meeting with an attorney, it's just like your paralegal. Your paralegal is covered by attorney-client privilege as well. So you would say something like, hey, we're gonna be talking about some difficult things today, so I wanna assure you that everything is covered by attorney-client privilege. Is that okay? They're gonna say yes. Of course they're gonna say yes. What this does is it starts to develop the rapport of, I ask questions, you give some answers, right? Start them off with some softball, easy, easy questions. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to set a time frame. This is really important for people that are, do their own consultations, but you want to set out how much time do we have for this for three reasons, okay? We're going to say, hey, we got three reasons why we're doing this. One is we want to make sure that they have enough time to make decisions because during this process, we're going to take them to an emotional place. We're going to be talking about their problems. The last thing you want to do is get them in that spot and then say, do you want to make a decision? And they say, I got to pick up my kids from school. So you got to get that out of the way. Has anyone been in a consultation they want to get out of where they've got someone crazy and they're like, oh my God, this is going terrible. Well, that's the other reason why this time's going to work, right? Because you're now going to say, geez, Marco, I see we're almost out of time. I thank you so much for coming in today, but I do have to this up. As I mentioned, I only had 45 minutes but let me give you some resources that might help you and you can kind of start walking your, your person out the door. The last thing it does is it helps build credibility. So if you tell them you got 45 minutes and you're at minute 40, you can say, hey, Marco, we're going through some really important stuff right now. I know I only said 45 minutes, but I can make 15 more minutes. Does that work for you? What that does is you just told him you give a shit about his time, that you respect him and the firm respects you. So that's really, really important. Then you're gonna propose an agenda. I say propose an agenda because you wanna make it clear that they have the right to say no. Now, if your client wants to fight your agenda, how do you think they're gonna be as a client, okay? Maybe there's some exceptions to it, but what you wanna do is you wanna give them a cadence of what's gonna happen. 
So first thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna collect some background information. We're gonna talk about some of your finances, some of the people involved in your case. And then we're gonna talk about what brought you in today. And after we talk about that, if we're able to help you, we will propose some solutions. Now we're not able to help everyone, but if we are, we'll do that at the end. Does that work for you? Most of the time they're gonna say yes. Now, what we've done now is we've opened the door. These are some script examples. I can send these to people if they want them. But now when we get into the actual script, we have opened the door to make this a systematic, therapeutic kind of transaction where we can ask them all the questions we want. We can ask them about their bank accounts. We can ask them about their credit card accounts, their retirement accounts, whatever we need to ask them about, okay? Because we've already said this is confidential and we need to get this information in order to go forward. So when you do get to objections about money, you may now know about any retirement accounts they have. You may know about their credit cards and the credit card limits. And it doesn't feel awkward now that you're now trying to ask it at the end, if you've already got that information. The other thing we're gonna be asking about is who else is involved in this, right? Who else is impacted by this? Maybe it's family, friends, relatives, neighbors. If we have other people that are impacted by this situation, then maybe we have people to talk to about getting money or co-signing or things along those lines. Again, you don't wanna wait till the end to ask for this information because it may, then makes it difficult to close that gap. Once you've now gotten through this part, then you just get to focus on the questions. Okay, tell me what brought you in. And really, this is where it feels like there's gotta be more to it, but there's really not. It's why is that important to you? Can you tell me more about that? Can you clarify what you mean by, how are you going to feel if you don't take action? What happens to you if you don't take action? You're just asking them to basically tell you their story and explain why they need your help. You'll be surprised at how many times people will realize by telling their own story over and over that they need to make a decision. You're also gonna be very important to ask is make sure you ask, what have you tried already to fix your problem? If they haven't tried anything, it seems really odd that they came to an attorney first, or maybe you were just the first attorney and they need an attorney like that. It's really important that you understand their reason. As we talked about before, time, money, and reputation. One of the other things we talked about before is that we start thinking with our brain and that's a big mistake. And I wanna give you an example that I hope hammers this home. So in Illinois, like some states, there's an income shares approach to child support, meaning that we take both parties' incomes into consideration. If you have more than 40% of the overnights, you pay less in child support than you would otherwise, okay? Now, you may have a scenario where a parent comes into your office and says, I'm getting a divorce, my, my wife filed for divorce. Okay, so tell me what's important to you. Well, I wanna have my kids 50% of the time. And if you stop right there and say, oh, this must be a good dad. He, he really cares about his kids. He wants to see his, his kids all the time. You could be making a major mistake. So what happens is when I do this scenario with, with all my uh, the trainees, they all assume that he wants to be with his kids. But I always say, you got to go a step further and say, can you tell me why that matters to you? Now, chances are you're going to get the answer of like, what do you mean, why does it matter to me? Like, they're my kids, I see them every day. I couldn't imagine you know, going any time without them. It's really important to me to be there. Okay, great. Now we've confirmed that his problems are time, time with his children, and his reputation, his reputation as a father. But what if you said, okay, can you tell me why you want 50% of your time? Well, what if his answer is, well, because I don't wanna give that bitch any more money. Whoosh. That's a big difference, right? If you try and approach those clients the same way, you're gonna have very bad problems. You're gonna have bad outcomes. You see, the second guy's priority was money. And if you try and serve people with the same solutions to different problems, you're not gonna have happy clients. So in order to find out what's really there is you have to probe. Can you tell me more about why that matters to you? And then before you go to the close, it's so important that you repeat back their problem. And you should be repeating their problem in a way that they've never heard it before. You've been taking notes, you've explained what they're going through, and you basically will say something along the lines of, so what brought you in is fill in the blank. You've already tried this, but it's not working. 
And if you don't take any action in six months, you're going to feel like a terrible, you know, fill in the blank, father, husband, employer, whatever their problem is, is that correct? Now, if you do this right, they're going to have a look of like, yeah, yeah, actually that is correct. So now when you go to the solutions, you go to the close, you say, okay, based upon everything that we've talked about, I think there are three possible options. The first option is you do absolutely nothing. Now, I may not recommend that option in your situation because, and you can fill in the blank, right? If you're a criminal attorney, well, you could do nothing, but you know, you're going to end up behind bars forever, right? Or you could try to do this on your own. Most states allow for self-represented litigants or pro se. It's usually not the good idea, but they could do it. And then the last thing is you can hire legal services. You need them to rule each one of those things out and say, that's the option I want. Great, now let's talk about getting started with our office. And at that point, you have your paperwork, you've got your retainer process, and you've made the sale. Now, I know this is uh, impossible to justify all at once in 20 minutes, but this is something I'm really passionate about. If you want help with this, I'm happy to chat with any of you. Email me, I'll send you my slides. For those of you who use Lawmatics, I have all of this in Lawmatics, be happy to share it with you. Send an email to admin at readylawoffice.com. We'll uh, get you what you need. I got 10 seconds, so I'm just gonna stare at you all. Thanks for listening to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. To stay in contact with your host and to access more content, go to MaximumLawyer.com. Have a great week and catch you next time.